Today we're making these decorative rings out of a bunch of broken glass. To begin this project, we first have to prepare the mold that we're going to be melting all the glass into. So we're going to start by cutting up all this kiln cloth into a bunch of long strips. With all the strips cut, we can then take a ceramic plate and put our steel mold on top of it. With all the forms in place, it's time to add the kiln cloth. This is going to prevent the glass from sticking to the steel once it's melted, and it'll make it much easier to remove. Now we can start filling the mold with glass. We're going to start by putting a layer of clear glass on the very bottom. After putting a bunch of clear glass in the mold, it's time to begin the color selection. All the glass that you see here is recycled from different art studios that I've collected from over a period of time, and in this particular case we're going to be using orange and yellow glass. Starting with the orange glass, we're going to take a bunch of chunks and start filling up the outside ring. Once we've added in some orange glass, we're then going to take the yellow glass and begin putting it into the smaller ring. With the first layer of color done, we're going to start adding some more clear, and then we're going to add more color on top of that, and once all this melts together, the clear is going to create spacing between the different layers of color. Now that we have the mold filled to the very top, it's time to melt it all together. This is done by taking the glass and putting it into a kiln where we can raise the temperature to over 1500 degrees. It takes about a week for the glass to fully melt and cool down, but once it's done, you can see the rings have gotten much thinner. Before we check out the colors, we're going to take them over to the wash rack and clean them off to get rid of any excess kiln cloth. So far I'm happy with the way each ring looks, but we still have a lot of work left to do. As you can see, there's a lot of sharp edges on the glass, as well as a lot of texture that we need to get rid of. So we're going to take the rings over to the flat lap and begin the cold working. We're going to start by grinding the front and the back of each ring, getting rid of any high spots or sharp edges. Then we're going to grind the outside part of the ring, getting rid of all that texture that you saw earlier. With all the outside surfaces nice and flat, it's now time to get rid of these scratches. So we're going to quickly draw on it with a sharpie so we know all the areas that we have to work. Then we're going to take it back to the flat lap using a bunch of different resin pads to slowly make those scratches smaller and smaller until you almost can't even see them. The outside faces are done as well as the sides. Now we have to get rid of all these chips on the edge of the glass. We're also going to be doing the same thing to the yellow piece. Starting with the belt sander, we're going to add a bevel onto the outside of each ring, getting rid of any chips and small cracks that formed from the rough grinding. With all the chips on the outside gone, it's time to work on the inside part of the ring, doing the exact same process, but with a couple different tools. So the faces of the ring and the sides and the inside as well have all been cold worked. At this point, most of the shaping is now done with the rings. We're now going to take each ring and sandblast the inside part. Once that's done, we're then going to polish the front, the back, and the sides of the glass. Before we actually do any sandblasting, we're going to cover all the parts that we don't want to sandblast with some masking tape. Once the mask is on, we're then going to take it to the sandblasting cabinet and we're going to sandblast the inside ring, giving it a nice matte finish. We're going to give the rings a quick cleaning to remove any excess grit, and once that's done, it's time to begin the polishing. This is done by putting cerium oxide onto a felt wheel. We're going to scrub it in with a brush. Now this part of the process is actually one of my favorites because you get to finally see what the true color of the glass looks like. But you also have to be very careful because while you polish the glass, it actually builds up heat and if the glass gets too hot, you could end up cracking it and ruining the project. To polish the edge of the glass, we're going to be using this large wheel for the outside edge and this small one here for the inside. And at this point, it's time for us to figure out how we're going to display the rings. I played around with a couple of different orientations, but I decided that if you take the orange ring and tilt it on top of the yellow one, it gives a really cool off-balance look, so I decided to go with that. But in order for this to truly work, we have to make a couple of adjustments. The first thing is to grind a flat spot on the yellow ring, that way it has a nice, flat, stable area to sit on. 
With a flat spot on the yellow ring, we don't have to worry about it rolling away. But as you can see, the orange ring has a lot of wiggle to it as well, so we're going to grind a flat spot on this ring too. With a flat spot on both the yellow and orange ring, we don't have to worry about them wiggling or falling over. Lastly, we have to carve our signature onto the bottom of the sculpture, and once that is done, we can finally check out the results. I really like the way the colors organically flow through the glass, especially in a dark environment when the color really pops. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more of my art, then be sure to subscribe, and thanks for your time.